Okay, hello and welcome to this weather update. Uh, it is about 9.40 p.m. on August 30th, 2019, and uh, rather tranquil day across our area, but uh, we're going to first start off with Hurricane Dorian. This is going to be the biggest hurricane to hit the United States in quite some time. And you can see here that um, it is now a Category 4 hurricane. That's right. It went from like a, a 1 or a 2 to a 4 in a day. Uh, which is nuts. It's rapidly strengthening. Maximum stain winds are near 125 miles an hour. Uh, and its movement is west-northwest at 10 miles an hour. Hurricane warnings are in effect for the Bahamas. Hurricane watch is in effect for part another part of the Bahamas. And then it's heading right for Florida. It's heading right for the east coast of Florida. So this is pretty crazy stuff that's going on. Um, hopefully we have the loop. All right, here we go. Here's the loop of Hurricane Dorian. Uh, and look at the, look at this healthy, healthy, healthy hurricane here. Uh, really, just really, just look at this thing. It the per the symmetry is perfect. Uh, you can see that really circular eye. Also, it's really just healthy convection, healthy outflow. It's in almost the perfect environment with these warm water temperatures, low wind shear, and plenty of moisture in the air. Uh, and that is definitely a concern. Uh, so uh, we're going to actually go to the NHC. Well, we're going to first look at the spaghetti models, and then we're going to go to the NHC. So here are the spaghetti models, and most of them, again, seem to... In well, actually, some of them are now turning north. So this is kind of a concern now. We're seeing more of them turn this thing toward the north and, and maybe graze the coast. So it may wind up being a coast grazer. So it seems that some of the models have changed their minds uh, on exactly where this is going to make landfall. Um, uh, so, uh, wow, this is, uh, oof, this is, this is definitely something to be concerned about for sure. Um, so, uh, let's see, where do we start? Or right, we'll go to the NHC. Let's go to the National Hurricane Center and read the latest public adv advisory on Hurricane Dorian right now. All right, so here is the key messages. Life-threatening storm surge is possible in the, in the Bahamas and storm surge and hurricane force winds and it's going to slow down so it's slowing it down now and that's the difference is the models are even going even slower now so um, we're going to look at the latest public advisory here at Hurricane Dorian uh, Dorian is stronger and additional strengthening is expected it's about 400 miles east of the northwestern Bahamas at about 570 miles east of West Palm Beach Florida maximum stain winds 125 miles an hour and its movement is west northwest at 10 miles an hour uh, changes with this storm. We got the hurricane warnings in effect for the Bahamas and a watch in effect for Andros Island. All right. So at 8 p.m. tonight, the well-defined eye of Hurricane Dorian was located near latitude 25.3 north, longitude 27, uh, 71 west, and it's moving toward the northwest at you know, 10 miles an hour. Slower west-northwest to westward motion should begin the night and continue into early next week. On this track, the core of Dorian should move over the Atlantic well north of the southeastern central Bahamas tonight and tomorrow and be near the northwestern Bahamas on Sunday and be near the, the, the Florida East Coast late Monday. So, uh, Hurricane Hunter Airport aircraft have indicated that the wind speed is up to 125 miles an hour. All right, now, it says Category 3. That's weird. Uh, so it's it's a category three, but uh, from what I've heard, that the uh, tropical tidbit says it's category four. So, uh, hmm, that's interesting. So it's going to become a category four. So uh, that's that's the thing. So I, yeah, I don't know what tropical tidbits had this at a category. So here it is. And tro if we go to look at tropical tidbits, if you go to the main thing, it'll say Dorian a cat four. So this was at 9.06. So they're saying it's a Cat 4. So I think there's some kind of mistake going on. I'm just reading what they said. <laughs> um, but, yeah, this is, this is going to be a major storm here. Uh, and uh, we're going to next look at uh, some of the models. We're going to try to show you uh, what's going on with the models here and why this change is happening. So I'm looking at the tropical tidbits models here, and uh, we're first going to start off with the GFS and show you the, the storm is moving slower. And because it's moving slower, what's going to happen is because it's slower moving, this strong high to the north here, which is keeping it from recurving and going completely out to sea, gives it way. And so the GFS has it making a landfall, a very a close landfall to just somewhere north of Miami, and then turns it 
and it has it go up the whole Florida East Coast. The center may not even go completely over land, according to the GFS, and that means uh, that uh, we could be dealing with... Uh, um, and you can see how slow it's moving too, by the way. So it it may has it doesn't really have it making landfall until Tuesday. And uh, you see how deep that is. 969, a really deep storm. It, so it rakes the coast. The center is still over ocean, so it can still hold its strength together. And then it's going to go into the, and then it's going to go up the east coast. Uh, well, not completely up the east coast, but it's going to go up along Georgia, North Carolina, and still staying a very formidable storm. And then uh, heading south and east of us uh, sometime uh, next weekend. So uh, this is a, co a concern for the entire East Coast now because of this change. This is the GFS, however, and we know the GFS's records are not the best. So let's look at the ICON, which is a variation of the Euro, and see how that handles the storm. So here it is Sunday. And again, we have to wait for these to load. Hopefully the spinning circle doesn't... <laughs> cause this program to have an issue. I don't think it's a spinning circle though. I don't think that's the issue with the computer. Um, uh, I had a lot of dust in the computer and I think that might have been what it was because uh, there was a lot of dust around the CPU and maybe it was getting a little warm. So here it is Monday. Has it making a landfall around Monday? This is the Euro model. So Euro is a little faster. All right, Has it making landfall around Monday and then has it going over the central part of Florida here. And look at that. It's forming something else. So this is the Euro, and I'm more inclined to believe the Euro, uh, even though you can look at the spaghetti models. I think the Euro is the better model. So that's what I'm saying. All these people think it might go up the East Coast. That's the GFS that's saying that. Um, this this looks like a direct hit on Miami on the Euro. So that's what I'm concerned about right there. So you could see that direct hit. Look at this. You could have three storms going. Isn't that nuts? So that's, that's pretty crazy right there. Um... We'll look at the NAM model as well. There is another model called the HDR, HWRF. So this is another model that we can use here. Okay, uh, Dorian. So let's uh, take a look at this. This is a, a floater type of model. All right, and it's kind of scary what this thing does. So here it is, making landfall. HWRF again. Looks as it just has it sitting off the east coast of Florida on Tuesday, and finally slowly making a landfall, and then going in. Uh, to Florida, right there. So this is uh, this is this is the HD. This is a hurricane model. Uh, so uh, we can look at some of the other things. We can look at the winds. So let's look at the wind speed here, and uh, we'll see what kind of wind speeds that we're going to be dealing with here. Okay, we've got to back it up. All right, and of course we got to wait for it to load. So this is always a problem with this site. So here we go. Um, you can see wind speeds well up there, over a hundred. 100 miles an hour. This thing is going to strengthen, I'm telling you. It's just going to keep strengthening until it makes landfall. And there you go. At landfall, it is going to have, uh, according to the HWRF, uh, this is at landfall here. You see that ring over 100 miles an hour winds here. You're talking 120, 130. These are sustained winds, all right? Sustained winds. Making a landfall around Tuesday. So it's a little slower than the Euro. Let's go to the NAM now. Actually, it's the NAM 3 kilometer. We've got to use the 12 kilometer. And again, I want to change the regions to eastern U.S. We can do that. All right, this is the 0Z, but we don't have enough of that in, so we've got to use the 18Z. So let's see. Okay, so uh, here is, uh, again, we got to wait. So, you know what? We don't need to, well, I kind of want to use this, mo this site, but you see the issue with this site. It's just really slow. Uh, and again, I don't really have time to be waiting for all these things to load. And the good news is we can use another site, and that's windy.com. So that's what we're going to use. All right, so uh, let's look at windy.com. I'm not even going to bother with tropical tidbits because it's just not going to work. Uh, we're going to shift over to windy.com. Okay, let's look at windy.com and uh, take a look at this. So uh, this is the URL model that we're looking at right now. We will go to Saturday night, 10 p.m. Uh, and here is the storm right here. Very healthy, of course. Wind speeds well over 70. This is only as high. Let's see if it'll actually give us this sustained wind here. See, I think it's underestimating the power. The storm is actually outperforming because they said it's already a Category 3. So these models just can't handle this storm. Uh, but I think the Euro is the right model for the track. 
Uh, so, uh, if we look at wind gusts, which probably is the best way to do it there, yeah, that's more like it. Uh, you'll see here, you got the wind gust 120, 114, uh, really just a really strong, uh, hurricane. Uh, and, uh, you can also do this too, look at the radar satellite. No, oh, that doesn't do it with this, no. It doesn't work with the models. Alright, so, uh, we'll go up to Sunday, 8 p.m. Here it is, uh, at, uh, Sunday, 8 p.m., over the Bahamas, all right, 65 mile an hour, 65 mile an hour, all right, so this, this is, this is the wrong one to use, so that's why I don't want to use it, because this isn't, a, this isn't, this isn't completely accurate, I think, with the wind speed, um, so now we go Monday, where it makes landfall, and, uh, you can see it's strengthening, look at the purples, dark purples here, it's getting stronger, the Bahamas isn't going to weaken it one bit, here we go, Tuesday, 9 a.m. It's nearing the Florida coast. It, and this is, oh, this is the Euro? Okay, so the Euro is recurving it. So, I don't know, the Tropical Tidbits must have had an old model. Okay, so this is the Euro we're looking at. I think this is the Euro we're looking at. And this is having it move a little further north now. So, uh, again, here we are, Tuesday, 6 p.m., still no landfall. This looks more like the GFS to me. It actually doesn't make a landfall at all. It stays just offshore of Florida. So, imagine... Florida may get spared on this scenario. This is the Euro now. I don't know. This is a different Euro run. I don't know what's going on here. And this is Thursday, and it's offshore of the Carolinas. Uh, and then Friday, I think it's using the... This looks like the GFS. It's supposed to be the Euro, but this looks like the GFS to me. Nope, that's the GFS. So, interesting. So the Euro might have just changed. I don't know if this is an old model or... Um, but it might have just changed the track and now it has it going up the East Coast and hitting Carolinas. Let's see how far we can go here. Now it's off the Carolinas. This is next Saturday now. And it's off our shores. And look at that. It comes awfully close to us. So this is definitely a concern. I, I don't understand why this looks completely different than the model that was on the... Um, I don't I don't get it, but alright, this is the sustained wind, so I gotta put this to wind gust. Oh, it doesn't go that far out. I guess we don't get wind gust. Alright, so let's back this up here. I don't know why I'm not getting wind gust now. Wind gust just disappeared. It won't give me wind gusts now. Something's really weird with this. Hmm. No wind gusts. It was giving me wind gusts before. Now it's not giving me wind gusts. We're going to have to reload this page and figure out what the heck is going on. Alright, let's try this again. I'm just going to keep it on wind gusts now, alright? So, according to this, there it is over Freeport. It just makes that turn. There it is, Tuesday 11. So it makes this turn... And it doesn't really make a landfall in Florida now. It looks like it just goes off the Florida coast and then goes up the eastern seaboard. The Carolinas, this is why we have to watch this. So there's, the, there's North Carolina. Look, we'll be having some strong wind gusts too. Look at that. So it'll be some strong. Look, this is still over 100 in that white area. Look at that. And this is just south of Long Island now. This is next Saturday. Oh, I, I guess the model just changed its mind. This is really strange. Because when I look at this model on this site here, the ICON model, well, hang on a minute. We were looking at the ICON model. Let's look at the Euro model. They are related, but what probably happened is the ICON lagged a little bit in an update. Yep, Euro does that. Look at that. So it just changed its, its, its whole... Literally a matter of run. Look at this. This was the zero Z run. If this is the zero Z run, has it making a landfall and going up Florida? It's the zero Z run. And it, yeah, so so apparently this has changed now. So if we look at the twelve Z run from Thursday, it had it going west, and now it's got it going east. So this is really weird. So. Let's go back to the zero Z run on Thursday. You'll see what I mean. See how this has changed so much. Zero Z run third. Zero Z one Wednesday. You see it. It was taking it much further west. Now the latest run. 
which is the 12Z run from Flor Friday, has it staying offshore and missing Florida, but then being more of a problem for the East Coast, for the East Coast further up. I'm telling you, this is crazy. The models, are, usually the euro is very consistent. So I'm just dumbstruck right now with what's going on. I'm just dumbstruck. Uh, that's all I can say. I'm just dumbstruck about it. All right, let's look at the NAM model. We already know the GFS solution, which is the. Uh, I'm not even going to bother. Let's look at the NAM. All right, here is NAM is higher resolution. So you see, this is Monday, 2 p.m., and that's as far out as we can go on the NAM on this particular site. Wow. So I'm going to have to keep our eye on this uh, hurricane. Uh, this hurricane has been unpredictable since day one. Uh, the, the amount of strengthening it's undergoing and the track is just changing constantly. So, uh, again, maybe Florida will get lucky, but uh, then we're, if it makes that right-hand turn, we'll have to worry. The best solution is it just goes out to sea and it doesn't hit anyone. But uh, I'll keep you updated on this hurricane for sure. Uh, there's a lot of unpredictable things that are happening in the models with this. Uh, and uh, here it is on the uh, high-resolution satellite here was taken earlier today uh, this is Dorian right here so ah man I tell you I, I don't know what to say about these model changes I don't know what to say literally it changed from yesterday it changed from yesterday I don't know what to say but it's a concern for sure that they, the models keep changing their track that's for sure um, so uh, next we'll look at uh, our weather for the next week a little bit of course that's going to depend on Dorian now so we're back with the GFS, and wouldn't that be funny if the GFS had the right idea with the recurving? Uh, and then it just this, this though the GFS seems to take it a little further inland though, and that would mean more he he worse winds inland as far as Florida goes. But then it just rakes it up the whole east coast, and this is a strong hurricane all the way up into the Carolinas. Cat two with Cat three, though I think it could make landfall in Cat and Florida as a Cat four or even a five, the rate it's strengthening. Uh, and then look at that it, it comes awfully close to us here uh, this is gonna really really have to bear watching um, imagine if this thing were to go up the entire east coast and be a hurricane the whole way and cause such devastation it's possible you know with climate with the climate crisis that could be the next thing that could wind up happening and it's something this is why we have to watch Dorian uh, but anyway uh, let's talk about our weather now so we're gonna back it up to uh, today, go all the way back to today, uh, and you'll see uh, we we are having a secondary cold front move through. See that high right there, uh, but that high then moves out on Sunday and Monday, and now you don't have as much ridging here. And if we look at the at the upper levels on the GFS, you'll see the reason why this is happening. So let's look at the upper levels, upper dynamics. I think this is the one. Okay, yeah, this is the one I want to use. So, you look here, and see, you have this straight westerly flow here coming for the weekend. But uh, And then here's a Monday. Here it goes, and look at what happens, though. The isobars bend a little more. There's a westerly flow which should protect us, but uh, you see that, that trough just relaxes a little bit, and that's a concern right there. So that's a concern. You see the isobars like more of a southwest and northeast orientation. That means that a hurricane over here would be more likely to go up the east coast. So uh, this is this is a really a major concern I have. Obviously, um, I was definitely not expecting that. I was definitely not expecting that at all. I was not expecting that at all. So uh, let's. Uh, <laughs> Oh boy, let's let's go into close into our region here, and we'll take a look at the temperatures and the humidity that we'll be dealing with here. So uh, you will see here uh, as we deal uh, as we go into Friday. Today was a little warm. We're going to look at some of the observations too. I got to talk about that too. Uh, tomorrow temperatures drop into the mid 70s, mid 70s for Sunday. There'll be more cloud cover Monday. Tuesday heats up a little more, and that that is the concern here. Look at that. We could have some heat on Wednesday. And then we have supposed to have a cold front move through, but it looks like it might stall out on Thursday. And then we've got the stall front over there. So that's my concern. You could actually see the reflection of Torian right there. Uh, let's look at the dew points now. 
So a lot of people like to diss the GFS, but sometimes it might be right this time. I don't know. You know, it's it, it, with climate change, it's very hard to predict the weather. So here, this is what it looked like today with the southwest wind. Humidity went up a little bit. Dew points come down to Marby. See, that front gets stuck right to the south of us. Uh, and Sunday, we uh, start seeing the humidity start to increase to the southeast flow. Humidity's coming back into the picture on Labor Day. It's back with us on Tuesday and Wednesday. You see that southwest flow. Here comes that cold front. Uh, and that cold front looks like it's going to be a similar deal. It's going to get hung up right to the south of us. So that's the concern. We're going to have a stall front there, and there again is Dorian. Look at that. So uh, that's that's definitely something to be concerned about. Let's look at the uh, cloud cover now. Uh, so we'll back up the cloud cover now. We'll look at the cloud cover. So uh, for the weekend, uh, we're going to have high clouds around because of the stall front. Just what GFS says, might be a little overdone. Sunday, same thing. Plenty of clouds around. Monday, plenty of clouds. Tuesday, maybe we lose the clouds in the afternoon. Uh, Wednesday, um, maybe less clouds. Uh, but again, we have that Dorian right there. And uh, you can see we're going to get in the cloud cover from that. So this is really a major concern that I have. And this is going to have to be really watched closely. Uh, it's a ways out as far as the effects on our area goes. But I'm telling you, I'm really concerned about this. Um, I'm really concerned about this. So let's look at the observations, and I'll just show you what the weather was like today across various areas, various areas of uh, uh, various places on Long Island today. So you see the dew points up to 67 at Farmingdale. It's more humid than expected. I mean, the models just have trouble. So it's 81 at Farmingdale. That's all it hit there, and there was a sea breeze, and it felt a little nice on the south shore, but I'll tell you, it was warm uh, inland, in the middle of the island and on the north shore. So let's pick an observation that's more a Bite that's probably more like the middle of the island. So let's go I Islip Airport here. So 71, dew point up to 68. Uh, hit 82 there. Uh, dew points rose uh, as through the 60s, so it's getting more humid as the evening is getting um, approaching here. Um, let's go and look at Tom's River and see how hot it is there. I'm sure it was way hotter there than it was here. So let's take a look at Tom's River. Um, waiting for that to load here. So 72 in Tom's River, dew point 69. And what did Tom's River hit? 89 degrees. See what I mean? 89 degrees. Way hotter there than on Long Island. Almost 90 degrees in Tom's River. Way hotter uh, with the humidity increasing. So we're going to look at the NAM. And also the sky cover uh, for the NAM. Uh, you know, we got to wait for this all to load, unfortunately. So um, you can see might be some serious around. Less serious for Saturday. And Sunday, yeah, we got the spinning circle again. It's just very slow. Sunday, there'll be more clouds. And uh, anyway, uh, look at the dew points. You will see that front come through tonight. So that front will be coming through tonight. Again, we got to wait for all this information to come in. So here is uh, here's that front that comes through. Here it is. Saturday, there it is. Dry air. But you can see what happens. Long Island gets into it, but it doesn't quite make it all the way through this New Jersey. Uh, and then uh, the humidity starts coming back on Sunday. You see the waves of humidity coming in there. Again, I like, kind of like this because I think it's a little more accurate with the dew points. So uh, we'll look at the precipitation. Let's uh, look at the precipitation here and see if we have any chances of precipitation uh, tonight. I don't think I don't think we're going to have anything tonight. I think it's going to be mostly dry this weekend. Maybe a couple of isolated showers, maybe Sunday afternoon. One has one over there. I think it's more likely as we head into Labor Day that we might see some rain. Uh, so uh, let's, the last thing we're going to look at is Earth Knoll School. And I, I want to just show you the kind of environment that uh, Hurricane Dorian is. Uh, you can see Hurricane Dorian right there. And I just want to show you the environment that Hurricane Dorian is moving in. So, so uh, let's... Uh, uh, we're going to first look at the air, and we're going to look at the humidity, and we're going to look at the humidity aloft. So, uh, yes, this is good. 250, maybe we'll use 500. Yes, yeah, this is 250, 500. This gives you the general idea. There's plenty of humidity along the whole east coast, and there's plenty of humid air. Some dry air here, but most of the dry air is up here. So it's got plenty of humidity to work with. 
uh, plenty of uh, well in the upper air, so it it has this, this this you have a pretty much saturated air column here again, plenty of humidity to work with, so it's going to do very well. Uh, and the other thing, of course, that that's going to we also could look at total precipitable water, which is uh, we'll go to the surface here for that, and you will see there's just a lot of moisture here, plenty of moisture. Let's move that away. You can see plenty of moisture around for this thing to feed on. But the other thing is the ocean temperatures. All right? We know we have these sea surface temperature anomalies that are all over the east coast. You can see them. Everything is in red. And some really big sea surface temperatures off the north uh, anomalies off the north northeast here. And uh, some of these are up. This one is. Oh, look at this one. This sea surface temperature anomaly, which is off New England, is it has 15 degrees Fahrenheit above normal. Off the Cape. 9.6 degrees above normal. Off the east end of Long Island, 5.4 degrees above normal. Maybe a little below normal right near the land, but we have plenty of above normal water here uh, for this storm to uh, strengthen. Uh, and uh, we'll actually look at the actual sea surf temperature now. And uh, you will see that uh, here's the actual sea surf temperature. Off the coast of Florida, 30 Celsius, 85.9 Fahrenheit. So you have plenty uh, of very warm water, especially right along the coast of Florida. So if this thing gets close to the coast, it could strengthen. And when a strengthening landfall, a uh, hurricane makes landfall, that's when it can be especially devastating. So you have temperatures well up into the 80s all the way over here. So this, this thing can hold its strength all the way up to this point. And even, even southeast of Long Island, water temperatures are in the upper 70s. So this is quite warm water. And then look over here, 80, 82. It could hold. Imagine... A hurricane hitting Nova Scotia uh, as a Category 2 or Category 3. It could happen with these water temperatures. So we have a really a bad environment. That's what I was worried about. Exactly what I was worried about for this hurricane season um, for uh, the formation. But these warm waters and the climate sh crisis that we're going through are going to be more scenarios like this. And Dorian has shown itself to be unpredictable un 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 to some extent. So... We're going to have to keep an eye on it and watch it every day, and uh, that's going to be the main thing I will talk about. Because the weekend, the weather here won't, you know, won't be that, you know, we'll have a fair weekend. Maybe there'll be some clouds around, but uh, the main thing that we're going to have to worry about and watch is Hurricane Dorian, and I'll do my best to keep you posted on that. So that does conclude this weather update. I want to take you, I want to thank you for watching, and uh, take care.